key members of the artistic community to examine India's position in an ever-evolving global art scene and to look at how India Art Fair can best position itself within the Indian context in light of these changing dynamics. It is a hugely exciting year for the fair and on behalf of Nihar Kapal, the founding director of India Art Fair, I'm very pleased to share some of the exciting announcements regarding the new collaborations that the fair is supporting before handing over to Zain Masood, our international director, to present some of the key highlights of this year's edition. We're delighted that we now have a three-year partnership agreement with our presenting partners, BMW. Globally known as a significant corporate patron for the arts, BMW is engaging with the art fair not just as presenting partner, but also in its programming and with a talk series, as well as bringing their art car by Caesar Manry Gates to the fair for the first time. We're also pleased to announce JSW as our associate partners. Whilst unfortunately Mrs. Jindal couldn't be here today due to some last minute issues, she and her organisation are hugely committed to the art fair and the broader art ecosystem. We'll be hearing from her a little later via video link. The art fair also supports the launch of the inaugural edition of the India Today Art Awards. Run by one of the top publications in the country, India Today is making a long-term long -term commitment to the arts by creating an art awards that will launch during the fair this January. Seeking to encourage and showcase the best of Indian contemporary artists, the awards will embrace all the aspects of the burgeoning Indian art market. In addition to this, the leading real estate firm DLF, that has several residential and commercial establishments across the national capital region, are tying up with the fair to launch a public art initiative spanning two months and all of their establishments to create public awareness and engagement with the arts. We see examples like these as very valuable additions to what the private sector organisations are doing for the arts, and they're very pertinent to this discussion today. Before I introduce the panellists and hand over to Mira Menezes to conduct the panel discussion, I'd like to welcome the new International Director of India Art Fair for 2016, Zain Masood, to the podium. Having spent five years as Assistant Fair Director for Art Dubai and having worked across global art sectors including the Middle East, South Asia, Russia, China and Africa, Zain brings truly global levels of art expertise and contacts to the fair. And I'd like to invite her to share some of the new developments and programming highlights for the upcoming edition. Join Neha and her team in putting together this edition of India Art Fair. We'd like to share some highlights and how the art fair has evolved. In the US, it's useful to reflect on the state of contemporary art at large and some of its recent shifts, to consider the role of, that art fairs play and how the art fair is responding to this and the realities of our local context and what this can all mean for art in India. One of the significant shifts um, and issues to the state of contemporary art in 2016 was the ongoing move in interest and power from the West to the East. Traditionally located in the West, in Paris, London and New York, 20 years ago it may have seemed unfathomable that in India, China and the Gulf could develop their own significant art markets and play crucial roles in the art world. And yet since the 90s, Asian contemporary art has grown exponentially due to regional biennales and triennales, the building of contemporary um, art museums, and the international recognition and success of Asian artists, and of course, global political and economic shifts. A new sense of regional identity in contemporary art has developed in recent years. This coincides with the emergence of growing regional prosperity and often ambitious governments eager to promote their cities or states as cultural hubs and to promote art as a, civic, as a civic necessity along with health and education. Support which India lacks, although it is so critical to building the foundations of the market. The globalization and growing wealth, elsewhere most notably in India, have allowed for a dynamic flow of people and ideas, both inter and interregionally, inter fostering new levels of artistic mobility. This has all been key to the sharp migration east of the art world, with museums, biennales, and collectors looking to new frontiers in art. Leading institutions are obliged to reflect this globalization um, and, and can no longer remain West centric in their programming. 
to maintain their relevance. They have a responsibility to keep their finger on the pulse of artistic practice in key regions around the world. Powerhouse galleries from Europe and from America have been opening over the last few years in Hong Kong, whilst they sign up key South Asian, East Asian, and Middle Eastern artists to foster relationships with local collectors and markets and to present them all over the world. Auction, auction houses have followed suit. And it's worth noting that whilst major auction houses have had a presence in India for many years, live auctions only began very recently in 2013, achieving record-breaking sales and demonstrating great confidence in the market in its revival and further potential. India is integral to global politics, not only for its booming population, but its powerful diaspora all over the world, which remains so closely linked and invested in the state. As an old country with an immense history in the arts, India boasts an established, evolved global contemporary art scene and rich history of trade with the rest of the world, trade of ideas, genes, and language, and not least the arts. These are a wealth of advantages and synergies that distinguish India from many of its neighbours active in the arts, in the Middle East and China. And within this context, India Art Fair has been largely responsible for the internationalisation of the Indian art scene, developing the local appetite for international art and putting the Indian market on a global map. In this sense, India Art Fair is playing a role here that is much larger than similar events in other places. And to appreciate this fully, it's helpful to speak a little about what an art fair is and what makes a great one. Art Cologne in Germany is regarded as the world's oldest fair. It was established in 67 for commercial galleries to exhibit and sell modern contemporary art. What is recognized as the Olympics of art fairs, Art Basel in Switzerland, was established in 1970 and has been cultivating its brand and its following for 46 years. FIAC, followed in 1974, and Arco Madrid celebrates its 35th anniversary this year, initiating a new program called Platform, which positions key art spaces and collectives from across South Asia that are unconventional participants at an art fair, although they are generating some of the most critical and interesting work in the region. We are also inaugurating the India Art Fair's first film program, curated by Shaihi Radio, and we're hosting projects that investigate the politics of food, presented by the Kenny Delfino Foundation from London. These explorations of film and food are natural steps for a country like India, so defined by these forms of creativity. The effort to engage new disciplines extends to the first speakers forum, which not only addresses access and integration across South Asia, but the convergence of disciplines, art and literature, performance and film, as well as overarching themes critical to our context and its progress. While hosting a conversation on corporate patronage, a panel on private collecting and public engagement, to explore innovative and successful models of engagement in India and other growth markets. We're also drawing into conversation leading voices from a new generation of collectors across South Asia. <coughs> Through these conversations, we collectively consider how we can inspire further support and this, of course, is one of the aims of this press conference today. So speakers of these panels include our collaborator Thomas Gust of BMW, Namita Saraf of Park Hyatt Foundation, Sangeeta Jindal of the JSW Foundation, Lucian, founder and director of the Sipang Museum in, in Nanjing in China, Bardik of Jada, founder of the Khabara Art Centre in Doha, Hara Kambusyan, founder of Collector Space in Istanbul, of course, Mrs. Karen Nader of the KNN here. And we're excited to host other key opinion makers, such as Stuart Homer, the Chief Curator of Media Arts at the MoMA, in conversation with internationally acclaimed artist and filmmaker Amar Kanwa. And we're delighted to have worked with our foreign partner, the Gutter Institute, further to the Asia Art Archive, Godric Culture Lab, and in an Art India, towards this really brilliant lineup. Um, in the spirit of collaboration and criticality. In tandem, we're hosting uh, further conversations as part of a spotlight series, intimate conversations that focus on exciting projects and specific topics that are contributing to critical discourse in India. Amongst them are conversations about the intersection of art and medicine, 
in historic and contemporary India. Edible maps have a desire, speculation, and landscape operate in investigations of the remains of the British Empire. An artist Lalu and Aisha Jatoy, artists from Pakistan, in conversation, and reflections on modern architecture in Chandigarh. We turned our roster of galleries towards a more considered presentation and welcome the same ratio of internationals as in 2015, although half of them are new and represent a curatorial approach and cutting-edge cutting programming from all over the world, including Mylock Fleisch from Rome, Grey Noise from Dubai, Sabrina Amrani from Madrid, El Santi from London, Harper Gallery from Jeddah, amongst many others who join long-standing visitors. Our program, this year, our program this year also sees our galleries, talks and projects alike all punctuate a newly conceived space of India Art Fair designed in collaboration with leading architecture firm Morphogenesis. In addition, the first 2016 VIP program will offer a more in-depth itinerary than ever before, encompassing the arts and cultural institutions in cities across India, including Mumbai and Chandigarh, further to intimate visits viewing exceptional private collections here in Delhi, artist studios and incredible historic sites here. So finally, what does this all mean for art and for India? The current state and the market in India is one of its potential. Whilst we struggle with the lack of legislative support, the talent here is endless, and this is one of the few territories in the art world at large where the Susas and the Saints of the Future are still incredibly accessible. The international community has recognised this, and it's time to help India's most important audience to embrace this too. India Art Fair has an important role to play and a responsibility in that respect. It has been already instrumental in putting together every level of the market here. But ultimately, the success of the fair will depend on the synergy between local and international. It's crucial to balance the needs and interests of our local audiences and colleagues who are our bedrock, as well as the fair's international standing. We look forward to building upon this, supporting curious enthusiasts and future patrons, and navigating what's out there this January and going forward.